All right, good afternoon, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Jolene Mujica. I'm the head of Trends and Tours at Windows Wear. Welcome to our weekly Tuesday edition of Windows Wear Live. Today, we're taking a look at uh, something that is uh, very pervasive that we've started to see within the past couple of seasons emerge as a trend and now is sort of uh, very much at the forefront of the way that we are designing both residential, both commercial, both retail spaces. It's something that we've definitely seen a lot of in uh, very recent times. And as the seasons progress, we're starting to see uh, more and more. So it's very exciting. So let's take a look at uh, today's trend report. So we're taking a break from the news to take a look at the rise of modern minimalism that proves that less is more, right? So as shoppers start to move online and to e-commerce, right? Strong e-commerce arms for big brands are doing very well during this uh, pandemic and during this lockdown, right? Striking retail design is more important than ever, right? Taking a slick, streamlined, and minimalist approach to design in a retail environment can give the perception of a sense of luxury and a sense of exclusivity, right? Minimal interiors can also take simplicity to the next level by leveraging pops of color, right? And subtle mixing and matching of multi uh, dimensional materials, right? Minimalist design retail also allows function to reign over distraction. So this really is about scaling back and allowing the product to be sort of uh, the hero of the story and allowing the setting to really complement and create something that's very soothing, calming, and engaging without being <clears throat> distracting or uh, overly dressed, right? So the first kind of thing that we see, uh, this is a great example of um, in Byredo, uh just this year, right? A very chic minimalism. Oftentimes I think people, when they think of the word minimal in a retail setting, may not think think sort of necessarily very, um, very uh, bare, right? And it isn't always exactly that. It can be that if that is the aesthetic that you're trying to go for. There should be a warmth in the space. It should not feel cold or institutional, right? But I think the use of different materials that complement the lighting and the product will help warm up the space while still maintaining that it is a minimal space. Part of the way you can do that is to strip back the layout, right? With fewer distractions or decorative elements, customers will be more likely to notice that your product that's for sale. Um, strip by, stripping back to bare essentials, you can also remove anything excess or without function or reason for being there, right? So everything really in a minimal space will have a function to it will have a reason that it's there. It's not superfluous. Spacious minimalist style floor plans promote a peaceful environment, right? Mimicking the space that many people prefer, which is indicative of shopping online, right? The idea of shopping online is that it is instantly gratifying. Uh, it's accessibly easy, right? You can do it from anywhere. You can do it sitting in a, you know, sitting in your car on your phone, in your pajamas, in bed, right? So if you're going to bring that idea to the retail space, really stripping back all of the unnecessary elements can help create that peaceful environment that people are really looking toward. Specifically in this time right now, when people are using, uh, you know, here in the US are using this time to sort of redecorate and uh, re-up their spaces. They're starting to, it's that home edit and Marie Kondo effect of getting rid of clutter and things that are uh, sort of gunking up their spaces and really adopting this era of minimalism. And we're seeing that translated into retail spaces really beautiful. This is the Maison Valentino in New York City on Fifth Avenue. Celine does a really beautiful example of this. Creative director Eddie Sl uh, Sliman 
has developed this new visual identity for Celine, redesigning their global locations with steel and marble and mirrored interiors. And Celine retail spaces now include expansive sculptural interiors, right? Marking this departure from the typically pared back aesthetic that is core to their brand's DNA. In the Madison Avenue flagship in New York City, which was the first store to undergo this sort of minimalistic overhaul. We can see gray basalt has been applied to all of the floors, making it very clean, making it very crisp. Uh, they've included lots of chunky structural columns that have been clad with panels of black marble, reclaimed oak wood, and gold-hued brass. Polished stainless steel has also been used to craft these horizontal shelves that line the peripheral walls and the low, the low lying plinths in which have been fitted with LEDs, which appear to hover above the ground. So everything feels very effortless. While it does have a feel, uh, a sort of um, industrial interpretation to it, it still feels very organically clean and soft, right? It's always about striking balance. Over at Jill Sanders, this is uh, Jill Sanders built this very beautiful space. And this the idea for this minimalist space was all about experimentation, right? Jill Sanders at uh, the Via San Andre store. Uh, this has become a site for temporary installations in a unique project that was designed by the creative directors. Uh, Lucy and Luke Mir, right? So the space takes on this distinctive new role with these rotating exhibitions that come in through the space throughout the year. It's very clean. It's very sculptural. Again, a lot of minimalist retail spaces oftentimes feel like art galleries. This is intentional, right? This is built into the ethos of the design, right? Sculptural simplicity with uh, bare white tones was the idea that they were trying to move toward, and I think they have successfully executed that. Over at Saint Laurent, Saint Laurent is entering this new territory by blending together a gallery of these magnificent African art pieces and vintage furniture. The sculptural African pieces, which are curated by Saint Laurent's creative director, Anthony Vaccarello, include a rare Sanofu hornbill from the Ivory Coast, a variety of ritual masks from several different tribes throughout uh, the continent of Africa, and numerous of other pieces of art that serve to preserve the cultural importance that has influenced many of Saint Laurent's stylistic decisions, right? So taking the inspiration that you build from your collections and making sure that that is also reinforced within the store and within the brand store experience, right? Making sure it's all very cohesive, here we see another visual of that, a different in, uh, a different angle. All of these aesthetics sort of collide into these fantastic pieces, which are placed alongside of these beautiful artifacts and classic furniture, right? So it all works together very beautifully, and there's a lot of uh, mixture of both organic and inorganic materials that makes it still feel warm, even though it is a relatively sort of a stark space right and the blending of the old with the new um in their cafe which i don't know if you can tell by the image on the right that is actually the the saint laurent cafe so it the cafe in and of itself is also very minimal minimally built but part of the fun is when you get um, a coffee or a drink they give you your to-go cup and that has a weekly qr code with a dedicated music soundtrack that you can listen to, which is a playlist that has been entirely curated by Saint Laurent. So this is an interesting concept for minimalism because it's not only building the mood visually and in terms of ambiance, but also now they're giving you an audible or an aural experience as well. So you can uh, scan your QR code and you get this great playlist on Spotify. As you are roaming the space, you can listen to a soundtrack and to a landscape, a soundscape of uh, music that inspired this collection and inspired this space. So it's a complete, you know, uh, complete sensory experience, which is very smart on their part. 
We're seeing in minimalism a lot of bold color schemes, right? Color forms a central part of many interior design schemes, and bold shades are definitely leading the way this season. Color blocking is increasingly being used to eye-catching effect, and particularly for zoning and to influence customer behaviors, right? It's not only color trend, uh, it's not the only color trend that we're seeing on the rise, though. We're also seeing a rise of chromatic color, which we'll see a couple of examples of where multiple shades of a single hue are used. And it's hugely popular right now, specifically in uh, retail, in beauty. It's very popular right now. And it's starting to make its way into residential uh uh, interior design as well. And while the former is sort of particularly effective in the sort of youth generation retail experiences, right, Gen Z, uh, the latter is actually gaining traction in the luxury space. So we didn't used to see all this chromatic coloring in luxury houses, and now we're starting to see it more and more. Great example of that to the right is Celine. This is their Miami space. It was uh, designed by Valerio Olgiati. He's a famous for his monolithic works. And he created a space to reflect the, bl the brand's minimal effortless beauty vision, right? The use of Brazilian Pinta Verde marble, which is used, um, which basically is this very extremely precious natural white stone with different iridescent veining, creates this smooth dreamlike effect. Here we see that same exact space sort of expanded, right? And with the stone being suitable for large area applications, the result is a space that suggests this canopy of clouds, right? It's very effortless in the way uh, it feels very serene. Um, two pyramid-shaped concrete pillars rise through the marble floor. You can see one on the right side, uh, the left image on the right corner, while one of them forms the stairway that leads to the upper level. The ready-to-wear and accessories collections are then displayed, creating this interior balance. So this store was really beautifully uh, conceived to feel very uh, cloud-like, and I think that they've certainly succeeded in uh, building that through the use of these really beautiful, minimally used, uh, you know, this beautiful um, Brazilian marble that they've acquired. We also see this in Burberry, right, as part of their holistic product focused uh, sustainability program. Two thirds of Burberry's products now make a positive, either social or environmental contribution. And we're seeing this reflected in their retail spaces, right? With the use of this particular very earthy pistachio color blocking, the seating in the center of the room follows this irregular geometry and it still all feels very cohesive. The store tells a story, but we see this very sort of soft, organic, green, mossy, pistachio minty green. We also see great examples of this over at Red Valentino uh, on the left and Chanel on the right. Pink has been fashion's favorite color for some time now. You know, this idea of millennial pink, it does really well, particularly again with beauty brands, but we're starting to see it uh, be utilized and sort of bleed into uh, luxury houses as well in a very uh, soft interpretation, right? This is a very harmonious, studied harmony of color and shapes and material that are used to achieve a very soothing minimalist approach. And both brands have sort of decidedly utilized this very feminine circular shape to them, right? Building this sense of this soft, very velvety intimacy in the space, even though the spaces tend to be quite expansive. They're actually quite large in square footage, but they still maintain this intimacy through their color and their texture. And bold colors, uh, again, these are great examples as well over at Balenciaga and Acne Studios, which is known for their proprietary pink. Balenciaga is building out all these beautiful, uh, what they call warehouse spaces that we're starting to see emerge. It's always important to note that a minimalist space should not be a cold space. I think oftentimes when people think minimalism, they think bare, they think uh, stark, they think empty. Uh, those aren't necessarily words you want to hear when you're walking into a retail space, you know. Um, but it could be modern and it has to feel, it has to really, uh, it's about achieving balance between 
being very modern and being very uh, warm, right? So color can be an effective way to invite consumers in. So we see bold colors being paired with the idea of a minimalist space because they complement each other so well. Let's talk about some experiential retail. Again, like I just mentioned, beauty brands are pretty much obsessed with millennial pink. No one more than Glossier. It's their proprietary color. Those Glossier bags. I always say I recognize a Glossier packaging before I recognize Glossier product. Uh, and that is because, you know, their pink, their millennial pink is so uh, core to their to their brand DNA. But we're starting to see as e-commerce continues to dominate amongst consumers, right? Retail spaces are looking beyond simply being places to transact with customers. They really want entire experiences that extend beyond the core brand, right? Technology is increasingly being used to aid with these retail experiences, right? We're seeing a lot of spaces that are incorporating AR and VR technology, QR coding, gaming and digital gamification in their spaces. But the spaces within stores that provide unexpected uses are the ones that are very successful, right? The element of a social media moment, right? Capturing something for Instagram or for TikTok or for Snapchat. And we're also seeing that these spaces tend to be very museum-like, right? People are in this era of minimalism. The spaces, like I mentioned earlier, oftentimes mimic the spaces that are built out for galleries to showcase art or museum to showcase, you know, relics and statues. And this is an environment that's built for people to walk in and mosey and sort of have a moment, see a piece of art. And these museum-like environments provide this atmosphere and this aesthetic rather than just a purchasing power, right? Rather than just a cash wrap and a transaction, you can really build uh, an experience with minimalism. Both of these examples that you see uh, are Glossier, both I believe in their uh, West Coast, in their LA store, and in their uh, New York City Soho location. We're also seeing this from streetwear brands. So minimalism doesn't necessarily, in my mind anyway, uh, equate to streetwear, but I think Kith is doing this in a very smart, beautiful way. Upon entering Kith, visitors are greeted with a piece that was brought to you by Snarkitecture. And if you are not familiar with Snarkitecture's work, right, snarky architecture, they've taken this idea of uh, classic modern architecture and given it a very playful and whimsical spin, right? So for their ceiling for Kith, they've created a feature wall of 200 casts of Air Jordan sneakers. And the minimalism really comes into play on the second level where the palette changes entirely and they swap out these polished concrete uh, uh, this polished concrete aesthetic for tile laid in, in a herringbone pattern. So when you walk into the space, it instantly feels, this to me feels very futuristically minimal, right? It, there's something about it that feels very space age, very NASA, right? Particularly with the sneakers floating above you, um, but it's very seamless. And even though uh, the color palette and the color scheme are, you know, white and gray, it still feels to to me, like a very fun, engaging space and not institutional, even though it tends to look very clean uh, and in institutional like. Over at Burberry, they have their first social store that they've opened in China. This new store features fixtures and plinths constructed in a variety of different materials and textures from both plywood to mirrors. There are these beautiful high gloss finishes with a color palette of beige, pistachio, which we saw earlier interpreted through Burberry's uh, space, pink, blue, as well as references to the uh, brand new Thomas Burberry monogram that was created by the creative director, Ricardo Tishi. The 5,800 square foot store features these 10 rooms and a series of spaces for customers to explore, each with its own concept, its own personality, and it offers a unique interactive experience. So again, building um, a minimalist space that is indicative of a museum-like experience, a space for exploration. And this all draws on Burberry's rich heritage. The store celebrates all of their house codes that have been reinterpreted by Ricardo Tichy, including the trench coat, the monogram, the house code of nature, and Bur the Burberry animal kingdom. 
We're also seeing a huge uh, expanse in the world of uh, wellness, right? So the wellness industry, particularly right now, um, has really thrived, right? If people can't get to the gym or their yoga classes or go to their favorite juice bars, right? They're getting very crafty and they're going on YouTube and they're watching their favorite fitness influencers. Uh, they're still, people are still maintaining being active in a new way. And we're starting to see, you know, I feel like one of the number one things that was purchased in the United States during this quarantine were bicycles, right? People were trapped at home or maybe were limited in their traveling capabilities and they really wanted to get out and be active. And a bike, particularly here in New York City, uh, is a great way to do that, right? So the wellness trend is has been thriving since 2018. It isn't going anywhere. And this natural aesthetic is seeping into almost every corner of interior architecture and space design, right? It provides a sense of relaxation and nature, which is perfect for brands that want to encourage customers to linger, which truthfully is every brand, right? No brand wants you to walk into their space and walk out empty handed, right? And it includes the use of natural materials and uh, plants are a big part of this, right? We're starting to see, particularly with uh, millennials, succulents are like the official plant of the millennial, right? Every millennial has uh, a succul at least one succulent in their home. Um, so we're starting to see this, like, this, uh, this back to nature element being interpreted. Here we see it beautifully displayed at Prada, right? Dusky gray and mid-tone woods such as birch are proving really popular in these spaces. And this is, uh, you know, due to the rise of bionic, biotic materials, right? That would be your woods and your natural fibers. So if you think in terms of minimalism and naturalism, right, that would be like things like rattan and bamboo and hemp and bark. And also your inorganic materials are really beautiful in minimalist spaces. That would be your stone, your native metals, your composites. So things like granite and sandstone, iron and clay. And when you combine all those, right, when they're being used for flooring, for cladding, for shelving in both commercial retail spaces and in the residential world, you really get a well-balanced minimal effect. Let's take a look over at uh, Jacquemus. Uh, while the trope of that sort of picturesque south of France coastal living isn't exactly new for this brand, right? Their creative director, uh, that is his whole look. That is his whole um, aesthetic, right? Uh, Jacquemus has built this very cultish take on laid back, barely there dressing that seems to have seeped just about everywhere, right? Uh, this effortlessly chic and simultaneously ultra wearable look has quickly become one that uh, lots of influencers and celebrities are channeling, delivering pieces that often carry the ability to transport you, right? So, you know, when you're wearing these big floppy sun hats and these very uh, light and bright whimsical sundresses, right, that are reminiscent of the south of France, it really, uh, it can evoke travel just throughout um through the collection right and beyond championing championing the sort of revamped rips of like gallic style right they're also i think this house really does a beautiful job of serving up this dreamy slice of heaven aesthetic right it's an aspirational lifestyle brand right there are lifestyle brands that are you know athleisure where it's meant to lounge around and it's meant to relax but there is something very aspirational about the the jacquemus collections and jacquemus himself has previously allowed right he's not just selling clothes he's selling you on a story he's selling you on a destination and to me there's nothing more minimal uh, than the official Jacquemus uh, handbag which is a little wrist a wristlet it's tiny like maybe two inches across right um, and yes these are statement pieces but again this idea of uh, minimalism and sort of scaling back even though the collection is a full collection, somehow everything feels very pared back, right? Very dreamy. Over at Loe, Loe is reinforcing their label's strong commitment to craft and artisanal goods, right? The store is meant to evoke the home of a taste-making collector, showcasing their brand's crafty luxe aesthetic, which includes their accessories, their ready-to-wear, their cutting-edge decor, and of course the contemporary art that is laid out throughout the space. Their spaces also blend this downtown New York City vibe with the brand's signature Mediterranean warmth. That's 
hard to do sometimes. New York City is, has a very, very specific, you know, sound, smell, structure to it. So when you want a space that feels New York, but is still core to your brand's identity, um, it can be, you know, very tricky, but I think they've done that quite seamlessly here. Anderson and Loy's architectural team lined all of their walls with stucco and stripped the floors to reveal their building's original oak planks. So for them, it was important to uh, showcase the space that they were in um, as well as the product itself. And tough concrete and limestone pedestals prop up all of their accessories. So again, their plinths are made out of um, limestone and uh, materials that are more uh, organic or inorganic in this case, since they are made of stone. Over at Bottega Veneta, minimalist retail interior, um, rather minimalist retail interiors shouldn't necessarily mean that you can't have fun with design, right? So it's Sometimes for some folks, I find this to be minimalism to be very soothing, but for some people's, in some people's opinion or for some people's perspectives, they think it's very boring, right? It's bare. It doesn't seem like there's anything there, but that isn't necessarily true, right? When you experiment with striking pops of color like candy floss pink or forest green, how Bottega has done here, you can ensure that your space is a texturally rich environment and incorporating color blocks into displays rather than busy feature walls will prevent customers from feeling overwhelmed. So shopping in a brick and mortar space is a very tactile experience for shoppers. They wanna see the product, they wanna to touch it, they wanna to smell the leather, right? They want a very sensory experience. And when things are on a feature wall that are a little too high or out of reach, it's a missed opportunity for them. So we like to, you know, with minimalism, if you're gonna use it in this way, right? These bolds, these displays uh, can sort of keep a consumer, uh, consumer's attention and keep the focus on the product itself. We see it reinforced here as well over at Ferragamo and Mulberry, right? This is in their window installations. Again, soft lighting, um, a lot of color blocking. And then we have the addition of, you know, uh, where minimalism meets ethical fashion, right? And often, um, whether it's minimalism or maximalism or any ism, every fashion brand and every brand worldwide, regardless of whether they are uh, in the fashion world or not, should always push to be ethical, should always push to be sustainable, right? And similarly to design retail, minimalist collections in clothing are increasingly becoming streamlined, right? Neutral palettes, clean silhouettes, they're timeless, uh, and they're very popular, especially amongst millennials. Not so much Gen Z. Gen Z really loves their patterns and they really love their strong point of view. But the millennials are really, really encroaching in the minimalist space. And we see this in very successful fashion brands like Everlane. Everlane right here uh, in this example is uh, a really great example of a minimalist brand. Cost is another one, right? CO, uh, COS, which is a sister brand to H&M and other stories, right? Very architectural in the way that they build their clothing. It's not disposable, right? It's not wear and, wear and tear. Uh, it is about, you know, owning less and wearing more. And Stella McCartney, of course, is a pioneer in ethical and sustainable fashion. And when they teamed up with uh, PJC Light Studio, they worked very closely with their design architects to explore the use of both industrial and natural materials to interpret them into this contemporary interior design for all of Stella McCartney's stores, right? So if you're an ethical, free trade, sustainable designer, right, you want your spaces to be reflective of that, right? It should be completely cohesive. The feature staircase uh, is a is very dramatic, right? So it sort of goes all the way up. It creates this moment of calm and escape between uh, both of the floors and the reduced light levels bring emphasis to video projections that they have, right? 
So it's always uh, interesting to see brands interpret minimalism uh, through the lens of sustainability, right? What does that look like when you're thinking of your carbon footprint as a brand? And I think Stella McCartney, that's something that's always at the forefront of anything that they do, whether it's building their office spaces, their retail spaces, or their actual collections, right? Minimalism and ethics are two things that can go hand in hand. And that does it for our presentation for today. If anyone has any questions, I will go ahead and give you all a moment to uh, submit those via the chat. You can submit them on our Instagram Live, Facebook Live, uh, LinkedIn Live, or Zoom, uh, where we are all currently streaming. And while I have your attention, uh, thank you so much for joining me today for uh, the rise of minimalism. This Thursday, we have a very exciting Windows Wear Live. We have the uh, visual merchandising creative team of Anthropology, one of my favorite brands. So please check that, that out uh, this Thursday at 3 p.m. That will be taking place. Again, you can uh, go to windowswear.com uh, forward slash live to watch that on Zoom or you can join us on any of our social media platforms, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. All right, that does it for us uh, this week since we have no questions. Uh, next Tuesday, I will be back and we will be going back to take a look at some of our retail news. We will have one uh, trend report a month. So this was for the month of September or rather, yes, the month of September. We'll have another one in the month of October uh, throughout the year. And of course, next Tuesday, we'll be looking at the news. And again, this Thursday, please join us for a fantastic panel of the created, the visual merchandising creative team of Anthropology. Have a fantastic afternoon, everyone.